What's your name? Hannah. And what year are you in? Fourth year. Uh, my name is Mustafa and I'm in first year. I'm Emily and I'm in fourth year. Hi, my name is Shirjil and I'm first year commerce. My name is Wajiha, I'm in fourth year. I'm Naji, I'm in fifth year. Megan, fourth. Do you take any selfies? Um, yes. More than I should, probably. <laughs> no, not really. I just don't feel the need. I usually don't, like not very often. I do take selfies. Yes, I do. Sometimes. I do. How often do you take selfies? If you're counting like Snapchat, I guess every day, like multiple times a day. Uh, while sending streaks on Snapchat, you know? Probably like a few times a week. I guess whenever I'm going out and I'm dressed up for something. Kind of like every now and then. And why do you think you take selfies? Because I'm super into like style and fashion, so it's kind of a catalog of the outfits I wear. I guess they just want to take selfies to see how they're looking. To post on Instagram. To inflate their self-esteem. <laughs> I take selfies when I think I look good. Sometimes because of where I am, I want to take a selfie to get like the background in it. Um, do you think take se taking selfies might have an effect on like your self-esteem or mental state? Yeah, I guess. I mean, it could make you feel either good about yourself or bad. It depends on like how they turn out, I guess. Uh, for me personally, no, I don't think so. I think it has a negative effect sometimes on my self-esteem when I take a selfie and I see like features of my face or body that I don't like. Uh, I feel like uh, self-esteem is something that you should have without taking selfies. So would you believe us if we told you that there's actually a term called self-phytis and it's the disease of taking selfies? Um, I think so because I feel like with the advent of technology, there's obviously going to be people using it in excess. Yeah, I guess I would believe that, yeah. yeah. Why would you believe that? Because I guess my sisters have it. Your sister have it. Oh, there is one? Yeah. Oh, nice. No, I wouldn't believe you. <laughs> Why? It just sounds like it's something made up. Yeah. I've never heard of it before. Mm -hmm. No, I've never heard of it. No? <laughs> no. I wouldn't. No. <laughs> I would. I would believe that. Is, is it like, what, what is that? The study by Durrett L. was interested in finding whether adolescents, young adults, and adults have different selfie-taking behavior. To answer this question, they surveyed around 3,700 Norwegian social media users. They found that compared to males, females were more likely to take selfies and post them online. They are also more likely to retouch their selfies using photographic filters. Among the age groups, adolescents were the most likely to take and post selfies and use filters followed by young adults and then older adults. In 2014, many stories appeared on media claiming the condition of selfitis, which is the obsessive taking of selfies, was to be categorized as a mental illness by the American Psychiatric Association. Because of this, the study by Balakrishnan et al. looked into the concept of selfitis with respect to the three levels, borderline, acute, and chronic, and develop a new psychometric scale called the Selfitis Behavior Scale. The scale was created based on interviews with Indian University students. They identified six components that might lead to Selfitis, including the following. Number one, environmental enhancement. People often like to take selfies in an enjoyable environment to feel good, express oneself, or generate memories and trophies. Number two, social competition. People tend to take an excessive amount of selfies because of competition. The behavior itself is very compulsive. Those with selfitis also tend to use creative tactics to get perfect selfies that serve socially competitive needs. Number three, attention seeking. Social media is a well-known way to gain attention. People with selfitis often take pictures of themselves and post them on social media because of self-admiration, which is an indication of narcissism. Number four, mood modification. Findings from the present study suggest that selfitis could be another potentially addictive behavior to make them feel better in some way. Number five, self-confidence. Taking selfies can increase the confidence of the takers. In particular, technology nowadays allows people to retouch their selfies, bring the individuals closer to their ideal self through a perfect selfie. 
This suggests a potential relationship between sulfitis actions and addiction. However, it may be that the increased self-confidence is temporary before baseline levels of self-confidence return. Last but not least, number six, social conformity. Sulfitis tend to take excessive selfies using certain protocols to gain social acceptance. Another study by Mel et al. wanted to find out whether taking and posting selfies with and without photo retouching would affect the mood or body image among young women. In this study, female undergraduate students were randomly divided into three different experimental conditions: taking and posting an untouched selfie on social media, taking and posting a retouched selfie on social media, or a control group which was only asked to read an article. The participants were asked to rate their mood and body image on a scale before and after the experiment. The mood items included anxiety, depression, and confidence. The body image items included feelings of fatness, physical attractiveness, and body size satisfaction. Results showed that women who took and posted selfies had lower confidence, feel less physically attractive, and more anxious afterwards. However, the feeling of fatness. Or satisfaction with one's body size did not change. In terms of confidence, women who could retouch their selfie felt more confident compared to women who posted untouched selfies. But their level of confidence was the same as those who did not post a selfie at all. All of the studies that were mentioned above suggest that selfie-taking behavior seems to be associated with mental well-being. And more investigation is definitely required to further elucidate this relationship.